and welcome to Morning Moments. I am so glad that you took the time to be with us today, whatever platform you're seeing this in. Uh, today I have an actor. He's been on uh, a Star Trek movie. He's been in uh, a lot of other other films through the years. Uh, he's had has had quite a journey. Our journeys parallel in some ways when we were talking about uh, some of the walks that we've had. Uh, he is. Uh, from Michigan, another Michigander. What can I tell you? <laughs> He's probably a, a, a long-suffering Lions fan and, and Tigers oh, yeah. fan too. Oh, good grief! Oh, God help us, Lions fans and Tiger fans, right? Well, anyway, Tim Kaiser from Michigan. Welcome, Tim, to Morning Moments. Andy, thank you very much, man. Well, you mentioned the Lions, and uh, you absolutely. I've been watching them since. Uh, 1962 and I watched them two days ago and thought they were going to win on opening day and they're always didn't happen. <laughs> they're always they're always rebuilding aren't they and you yeah. know I, I I one of the things I've been telling people kid people in our church they go who who do you cheer for I says the Lions and I always say uh you know they're not mathematically out of the playoffs of course the season didn't start <laughs> but uh I'm, that's what we always look at are they mathematically out of the playoffs that's what you right. always look at we're, yeah, we're big math people for Detroit fans. Well, you Tim, tell us, what do you do and why do you do it? Boy, that's uh, an interesting question. But uh, I think the bottom line is, is that um, I committed my life to Christ. And something as um, we're both, I found this interesting. I don't know if your fans know, you've been married 46 years. And I just celebrated 45 years of marriage. So that's a cool journey. Uh, together, we've got that in common, and uh, I, I got a kick out of that. Uh, but as a young, looking back on my life, just uh, committing my life to Christ at a, at a young age, and um, seeing all the different things, the journeys, the paths that we travel in, I think that's the motivating factor, just really submitting ourselves to God, knowing that His grace is sufficient for us. And that's a motivator. It's a big motivator and, and wanting to be obedient, knowing that when we obey, just doors open, things happen. When we submit ourselves to him and, and return our gifts that he's given us, just he increases things just because of his grace. And that's, that's kind of how I, I look at that, uh, the answer to that question, his grace. Because we fail, we sin, um, you know, he picks us up. And we've got to be that prodigal and just return to him on a daily basis. We love him. Yeah. So you went, you went into acting. Uh, you were in worship before. You were mm -hmm. telling me a story. I love the idea that you told me your, well, your first album you did, your backup singer was Sandy Patty. Is that right? <laughs> yeah, that's right. And who She's else was? And, and, and Steve Green. Steve um, Green, they, that's yeah, not bad to have your for, backup. <laughs> yeah, they worked for the Gaither Studios. This is in 1979. And um, I had a dream to do an album. It was really well done. Uh, we did it connected at the Gaither Studio in Indiana. And, uh, you know, it's funny because I didn't think I, I knew I was a decent singer. But when I heard them sing, I'm like, wow, they're amazing. Yeah. <laughs> That was a cool experience. She wouldn't remember me. She probably did hundreds and hundreds of different artists. That was before she broke big. And they both broke big. So that's really interesting. Yeah. Well, you're the one, your album gave them their start. And that's that's right. I gave exactly. them a good start. <laughs> so acting, acting was secondary to you. And now, now all these years later, God's brought you back, looped you back right. into You know, I grew making. up, I think uh, I was very athletic as a young boy, really involved in sports. Another thing that you and I share, I had a big baseball autograph collection. I would hang out at the uh, Tiger games. And when the guys came out of the locker, get autographs and then I got the bug. I used to, you know, write players and they'd send their autographs to me and autograph cards. So that was really kind of fun and uh, very athletic, though. I played uh, sports college baseball, um, never really excelled to the uh, to my liking, but it was a gift that God gave me and I really enjoyed it. And paralleled with that, I always had this um, artistic side of me that it wasn't really that cool growing up to kind of express, you know, so I was really, you know, rough and tumble into, you know, uh, baseball, basketball, football, hockey, and um, 
yeah, anyways, uh, as I um, kind of grew in my early marriage, I got connected to singing, which then the first acting opportunity happened at our church. I played uh, the role of King David. It was a big production before there was mega churches. And uh, that kind of sparked the acting bug within me, the, the performance thing. I'd never done that before, and it was really well done. Um, and then that talent lay dormant for from 82 until uh, 12 years ago, 2010. You know, God, God gives us talents, skills, mm -hmm. and, and passions. And I've often said, if you don't know your purpose, find out what your passion is, because mm -hmm. usually your purpose is wrapped up in your passion. Mm -hmm. And God brings that back to light saying, now you're in a, in, a, in a chapter in your life where I could use those passions, or you're willing to submit mm -hmm. those passions to me. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. After rededicating my life uh, in 2000, I, I was led back to understand God's grace through uh, my brother-in-law who was diagnosed for cancer. He, had, um, he was diagnosed in 97 and died in February of 2000. He and I were really close. And um, in December of 99, he had shared how the Holy Spirit had really just visited him and he said, Tim, this isn't because I'm dying of cancer. You know, I really can, I saw something and he's sharing all this stuff with me. And I was like, I was my, at that point in my life, I was so numb spiritually from disappointments and coming in 99, I had, uh, had another summer of 99. I had made a decision that I really needed to quit drinking. And that was another story in itself. But um, the next thing to get realigned in God is recommitting, reconnecting with my heavenly father. And so that started in 2000, but you're getting back. I'm taking the long way to answer or comment about talents. So here I am an older guy in my fifties now, 2010, mid, mid to late fifties. And, you know, realizing that God could still use me. I've just figured as we kind of age chronologically that our days are over with, you know, anything spiritual you know uh, it's more the younger people doing everything there's no use for us anymore no use for me and it was through just a, a strange thing that uh, I started to hear a lot of messages about talents and just bumping into people and and reading things in the word about talents and lo and behold God showed me that it's never too late you know we we can't as long as we have air to breathe and a willing heart God can use us and open up doors for us that would just blow us away. And he's done that for me. You know, Tim, I'm going to ask you the next couple, two minutes left in this mm -hmm. interview. Could you, could you tell folks that maybe are questioning, uh, I, I'm, I'm there, I, I've wasted mm -hmm. so many years, or I've had, I, mm -hmm. I, I need to come back, but God won't take me back. What would you say to them that, 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 don't realize the best is yet to come mm -hmm. and then God's Amen. got a purpose plan Amen. and a hope for them what would you tell them today well the most important thing I think what I learned and it's this is just all um we forget these things but we have to really first of all put Jesus first in our life submit ourselves to him and lay our lay everything that he's done it's as if we have to give it back to him lay it at his feet and and not take ownership of it and knowing that we're putting our faith in him to do it, to, to use us to however he wants to use us. And in doing so, um, it's just an amazing like process, like gravity, you drop a ball, it's gonna hit the floor. We surrender ourselves to God and we open up our hearts and he increases things. He starts to restore things. He's a, he loves to restore. I golf a lot, Andy, and I love, when I'm around the golf course, picking up broken tees and squishing that tee back together and, and golfing and using it. And a lot of guys tease me, hey, what are you doing picking up tees again? You know, I got bunches of tees, but it reminds me of what Jesus does, the broken read in our life that he restores us. He wants to restore us. He longs to restore us. He loves us. And it, to me, it's just, it, it's just an amazing principle in God. You know, restoration. 
Yeah, well, what a great message. Thank you so much, Tim. Some of you are listening to this and go, I, I don't know why I turned this interview on, but this is the reason you need mm -hmm. to come back to him or you need to Amen. surrender your talents, your purpose, your plan to him and say, God, I, my life is in your hands. Mm -hmm. Please uh, pass this interview on to others that may need to hear this. Down below, I'm going to talk, I'm going to put down all the movies that Tim's been in and what he's doing. And, <laughs> and so you could follow him. Uh, but as we close this interview, I want you to take a few minutes and pray for Tim Kaiser. He needs your prayer, folks, and you need the practice. So pray for him that God would continue to bless him as he su submits and surrenders his talents to, to the Lord. Thank you, Tim, for being with us in Morning Moments today. Thank you, Andy. God bless you. And thank you for coming to Morning Moments. And please come back for some more Morning Moments.